Welcome to One Book, One Review. Today's book is Songs for the Missing by Stuart O'Lan. This is a strong novel that you will get emotionally involved with. In the first chapter, we meet Kim Lawson. It is the summer after her graduation, and she can't wait to leave her hometown to go to college. The reader gets to know her friends and family and her daily routine. And then she disappears. Songs for the Missing is in some ways about Kim, about her being missing. The rest of the book, we accompany her friends and family on their search for her, and at some point continuing to live their lives. The novel is divided into chapters of varying lengths with meaningful titles. The perspective shifts around freely. Most of the time, things are presented from a mother's or father's point of view, but we also see things from a sister's perspective, as well as Kim's best friend and boyfriend's point of view. Whereas some chapters stop in on everyone, others only focus on one person. Whoever the narration follows allows us an insight into their thoughts and feelings. This is a very strong mode of presentation because we gain first-hand knowledge of everyone involved. The pace of the novel also changes. In the beginning, time seems to move slowly. So many things happen in these first days after Kim's disappearance. But the longer she stays missing, the more time passes between the chapters and in the chapters themselves. Sometimes it almost feels like a summary of what has happened since the last time we checked in with that person. I have to say I'm amazed at the power of this novel. First of all, it is a realistic story of a loss. The reader learns about the various means a family can apply and initiate to help them look for support, the kind of machinery that is involved and the organization that is needed to keep a missing persons case alive. When they were talking about flyers and posters, I found myself wondering how many of those I've ignored in my life already, and if I would recognize someone from a poster if I ever had them in front of me. Second to that, I was surprised at the emotions this novel raised. I was mad at Kim's friends for being so selfish, and later I disliked her mother for turning into this public person, as if the loss of a daughter made her important somehow and gave her a time to shine. None of these feelings lasted the longer Kim stayed missing, but I started wondering how I would react and deal with the situation. And then there's also the impact of time. As the novel progresses, it gets harder to stay focused and interested in the story, which I thought was the most amazing, as it imitates the reality of such cases. More and more people abandon a missing person case because so much time has passed and it's hard to hold on to hope and not give up the search. Life has to go on, and often it's the parents who seem to be incapable of letting go. I was really impressed by this experience. All in all, the novel had me close to tears at some points and angry at others. It was like a roller coaster ride, sharing the lives of those left behind until they find closure. Next, I'm reading The Hunger Games, as I've heard so much about it. Thanks for watching One Book, One Review.